Hey everybody, East Coast Pete here. Today I've got suicidal tendencies. No, not what you think. This band, Suicidal Tendencies, are a crossover thrash band from Venice, California in 1980. Mike Muir is the only original member left with DRI, Corrosion of Conformity, Stormtroopers of Death, Suicidal Tendencies are seen as fathers of crossover thrash. You probably know that when I say crossover, I'm talking about hardcore. Crossover thrash, on the other hand, is thrash in fusion with hardcore punk. Metalcore and grindcore are similar, but not the same. And that, again, is not the same as thrashcore, which is much faster than crossover thrash. See you. Everybody gets to learn something today. Here in East Coast Pete. The current lineup is Muir, guitarist Dean Pleasance and Ben Wyman, bassist Rod Diaz, and drummer Dave Lombardo. And their debut self-named album went in 1983. And the single Institutionalized was one of the first hardcore punk videos on MTV. After follow-up joined the army in 1987, they signed with Epic Records. And after quite a bit of success, the band broke up and severed ties with Epic in 1995. And then they reformed a year later and they are still viable today. That's 40 years. Wow. The band's beginning was marred with an association with gangs, namely Venice 13, a criminal organization of young Mexican Americans and immigrants. It all began with the teens performing as a party band in and around Santa Monica. Muir took to wearing a blue bandana expressing his colors and his allegiance. The gang also showed their own allegiance to the band calling themselves suicidal psychos with chapters in Venice, Long Beach, Santa Monica, Orange County, Oceanside, San Diego, and even in San Antonio, Texas. They have been around since the 60s and are known as one of the most dangerous street gangs in Southern California. They are enemies of the Crips and affiliated with Mexican Mafia. That means drugs. Other punk bands in this particular scene were BPO and Chaos 13. Suicidal Tendencies have had 34 different members. Mike Muir is described as a competent lyricist, injecting humor into the Fast Furious music. The single institutionalized appeared in the film Repo Man and on the TV drama Miami Vice. The song makes a cameo appearance in Iron Man and I don't mean the Sabbath song. All this and MTV gave the band plenty of exposure. In 1987, Suicidal Tendencies was banned from Los Angeles venues as their fans ripped out 10 rows of seats at Perkins Palace. And this led to a hiatus and Muir trying his hand at producing 
and starting a label. Suicidal Tendencies reformed in 1987 and released their second album, Join the Army. It was more metal than funk and fans were of mixed reactions. New lead guitarist Rocky George is credited with the change of format. George was a fan of Motorhead. Mike Clark also helped to turn Muir's punk cred into thrash. It all made sense when the band signed with master major label Epic. Long-time punk fans were having none of it as they were hung out to dry. More changes came with the addition of Robert Trujillo on bass who managed to inject funk into the mix in 1989. This made the sound more complex, almost to the borders of prog metal. The band toured with Queensryche, and this was the first time they were seen in L.A. in years. This brought the band into attention of the alt-rock community, who compared suicidal tendencies to the Red Hot Chili Peppers. The new album was Art of Rebellion. New fans and critics loved it. It was debuted at number 52 in the U.S. They now toured arenas with Metallica, Guns N' Roses, Danzig, and Kiss. End of story? No. Muir chose this moment to re-release music from the early days and come out with a new album of punk music just to show that he could. But no one was buying punk in the 90s, so suicidal tendencies broke up and reformed again. Members of suicidal tendencies have ended up with Ozzy Osbourne and Metallica and Megadeth. Muir put together a new lineup in 1996. Punk and skate punk were coming back into style. The metal fans were not amused, but the long-suffering punk fans were delighted. Freedom was the new album in 1999. Critics said Muir had dumbed himself down, both lyrically and musically, so the follow-up had music from four different genres, titled Free Your Soul and Save My Mind. There was now something for everyone. There was even a single titled Pop Song. And now it was time for hiatus number three in 2004. Game over? No. <laughs> three more albums from 2013 to 2018. 13, World Gone Mad, and still Psycho Punk after all these years. 13 was somewhat ironically the first new material in 13 years. World Gone Mad was intended to be the last studio album, but still, Psycho and another release in 2020 shows that Suicidal Tendencies never really had any. The new album is supposed to be old school, no surprise. There are way too many influences to mention. I'll, I'll go ahead and say a few of them are Hendrix, Ramones, Sex Pistols, and The Beatles, Slipknot has long expressed admiration for suicidal tendencies. Wow, what a ride. Just want to say a few more words about the first album. Here's the song, Suicides Are in an Alternative. 
No, it isn't. Two. Two-sided politics in one minute. Three. I shot the devil. They want your guns. Four. Subliminal. This is a sludgy one. Five. Won't fall in. There's lots of goose stepping. I know they don't call it that. Six. Instrumentalized. Dangerous teenagers. I like that the songs are short. And all I wanted was a Pepsi. A Pepsi. Members of tomorrow. That's bass backwards. Possessed. This is all about dysfunction. Fascist pig. Is this the single? Ten. I want more. Of course you do. And 11, suicidal failure. Welcome to the world of you. <laughs> well, there's my show. That was a long one. Okay. I hope everybody's staying inside and staying germ-free. Just got a little while longer, then we can all have a big party. What do you say? Take care of yourselves. I'll see you next time.